Safety Lab that is um, for the lab that's tomorrow, um, and this is the lab that is on starts on page eight sixteen in your book and goes to page eight. 18. And the only thing that you need to do that I'm going to check for tomorrow is make a table to record all of your data. Um, and at the end of this video, I, or at some point during this video, I'm sure I'm going to make a table. Maybe I'll like put it like right up in here or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But I'm just going to walk you through your lab and what it is that we're doing and the point of it and all that good stuff. Um, and kind of walk you through some of your post lab questions to help you with that. So first of all, this lab is the very typical vinegar baking soda lab. Vinegar is CH3COOH. We're going to add to that some baking soda, NaH, CO3, sodium hydrogen carbonate. And when they react, the most obvious product that we're going to make is the CO2, which will bubble off. And then we're also going to make water and the salt, sodium acetate. And what we're going to do, the purpose of today's lab, is to show the mole ratio of all of these substances is all one. You know, there, it's one to one mole ratio of the reactants to the one mole ratio of the salt that we're going to produce. And so to do that, we need to use equal molar amounts of both reactants, equal molar just meaning the same number of moles. And we are going to use 30 milliliters of one molar acetic acid solution. You know what 30 milliliters means, but you're probably going molar. What the heck does molar mean? Well, molar stands for one mole per liter. Whatever this number is, is how many moles it is per liter. It's always per one liter. So if this is like a 0.5 molar solution, then it would be 0.5 moles per liter. So we can really easily figure out how many moles of the acetic acid we're going to have by taking the amount that you pour into your graduated cylinder, 30 milliliters, and because molarity is in moles per liter, we first need to convert these milliliters to liters. So to do that, you take a thousand milliliters to every one liter, and then your milliliters cancel out. And to figure out how many moles, you just use the molarity, one mole per every one liter. And then your milliliters cancel out, liters cancel out, and you are basically left with 30 divided by 1,000, or 0 0.030 moles. And I'm just going to put AA for acetic acid. And so that's how you find the number of moles of acetic acid that you're starting with. With Because we want to prove that this is a one-to-one -one mole ratio, well, then we also want to get 0 0.03 moles of the sodium um, bicarbonate, sodium hydrogen carbonate, or baking soda, whichever of those three you want to use to, to name it. So this time we're going to start with number of moles, 0 0.030 moles of NaHCO3, and convert this to mass. Well... To get from moles to mass, you have to use the molar mass, and each mole of NaHCO3 has a mass of 84.0 some odd, we'll just do 84.1 grams, NaHCO3. Moles cancel out, you work this out and you end up with 2.52 grams. Remember, I'm just going to do this math very quickly. I suggest you pause it, figure it out for yourself, and then hit play when you're ready to check your answers. So this is about how many grams of baking soda we want to react with our 30 milliliters of acetic acid to have a complete reaction. Now, because it's chemistry, exact numbers don't, exact amounts starting out with don't really matter. If instead of 30 milliliters, you only hit 27 milliliters, that's fine. You would just, instead of 30, right here, you would plug in 27, and then you would calculate and you would get something a little different here. Same thing here, don't spend forever trying to get 2.52 grams of sodium bicarbonate. Just get somewhere between two to three grams, like your procedure says in your book. And whatever you hit there, you'll need to convert it back to moles, basically doing the opposite of this, so that you have the amount of moles. So let's just say, for you know, argument's sake, that you worked this out and you did only have 27, uh, well no, let's say you hit the 30 milliliters on the mark. So you have 0 0.030 moles of acetic acid, but you overshot this a little bit and instead of 2.52, you got 2.72 grams of sodium bicarbonate. Well, that's going to work out to 0 0.033 moles. And so looking at this, we know that this is supposed to be a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So if every one mole of this reacted with every one mole of this, 
then that means if 0 0.030 moles of the acetic acid react with the sodium acetate, it's only going to react with another, oh crap, that's not what I meant to hit. It's only going to react with 0 0.030 moles of the sodium bicarbonate, so that means we're going to have a little bit of sodium bicarbonate left over, which is fine. Over here on the other side, we have three products. Now the CO2, that's going to go off into the atmosphere. We're not going to be able to, to, you know, with what we have in our lab, be able to do anything with that. So we can't measure that. What we're going to be left with is a solution of water and sodium acetate. Well, kind of hard to measure the water when it's used as a solution. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to heat this, evaporate off the water, and then measure what mass of this we have left over at the end. And if we reacted, you know, this right here, then we should expect one to one mole ratio to form 0 0.030 moles of sodium acetate. So to work out the mass that we expect to get, you take that 0 0.030 moles and multiply it by the molar mass. Each mole of sodium acetate, I'm kind of running out of room here, has a mass of 82 point something, zero something grams. So you multiply the two of those together and you get like 2.46, I think is what you get. And that's sodium acetate. I'm just going to abbreviate it NA and then capital A. So let's say this is what you expect to get. But let's say you did this lab and you only actually end up getting uh, 2.34 grams of sodium acetate. Well, at the end of it, you're going to need to compare these two numbers and calculate your percent yield. And percent yield is calculated by taking what you actually got, divide it by what you expected to get, and then because it's a percentage, multiply that by 100. So you would take 2.34, divide by 2.46, get something, 90 or something like that, 0.95, and then multiply it by 100 and get like 95%. That's not exact math, but I don't have a calculator right next to me. So, And that's all that you're going to have to do. <clears throat> now, for this particular lab, you're going to need to make a data table, and yes, you have to use a ruler. So your data table, wow, that's a really crooked line. Your data table is going to need to include things like um, the evaporating dish. Sorry, the mass of. Uh, evaporating dish mass. Uh, you're also going to need the watch glass. That's that big thing that looks like a contact lens. And you'll need the mass, the starting mass of all of this stuff with the baking soda in it, I think is what they want us to get. Yeah, so you need to find the mass of your baking soda. You'll need the volume of your acetic acid. You will need, at the end, your ending mass of the sodium acetate. And then you'll need to do some calculations. So like you'll need the molar mass of the sodium uh, bicarbonate and you'll need the molar mass of the sodium acetate. Uh, you will need, I guess you're going to have to calculate for number of moles of each of all three of these. So you'll have, you'll have two molar masses and you'll have three number of moles on each of these. And that should be about all you need. Uh, and then your calculations will be done with your post-lab questions. So if you have any questions about this lab, email me tonight or I will see you tomorrow morning. And don't forget that the retake is tomorrow morning as well. So study well. Adios.